Mr. Leahy. Today's the day we regain control of Sunnyvale Trailer Park, Randy. Top Break Revolvers. This was a feature developed for revolvers around the same time as the more common swing out cylinder you see on most modern revolvers today. Instead of the cylinder being mounted on a pivot and latched into place, a top brake's frame is hinged below the cylinder. On most top brake revolvers, the action of opening automatically operates an extractor that pushes the cartridges in the chamber back far enough that they can either be hand removed or flung out. Both types of revolvers were developed around the 1850s. The first top brake revolver and swing out cylinder revolver that was patented was done so in France and Britain in 1858 by Duveem. Other designs were developed around the same time that are less known, such as tip-up revolvers like the Smith & Wesson Model 1. The design of such revolvers had one primary and obvious purpose, which was to more rapidly load cartridges and unload spent casings. Many revolvers of the mid-19th century were loaded at the muzzle end or even by removing the cylinder. Cartridges loaded by using a loading gate were a huge improvement. During the Civil War era, up until about 1870, many revolvers required the lengthy process of being loaded using the cap and ball method. Some made this process quite complicated, which could include adding beeswax to a chamber, which is thought to help prevent a weapon from chain firing. Due to lengthy reload times, many soldiers, particularly cavalrymen, would carry multiple revolvers. Some men would carry spare preloaded cylinders, though changing these out could still be a lengthy process, depending on the revolver. Eastwood here is using a Remington 1858 New Army. Two of the most famous top brake revolvers of the 19th and 20th centuries were the Smith & Wesson Model 3 and the Webley Revolver series. The Webley Revolver first began service with the British military in 1887, eight years after the Anglo-Zulu War. Impressively, Webley circulated in British military service right up until 1970. Webley revolvers were used in significant numbers during World War I, and as such, brought about the common adoption of speed loaders, such as the pre do loader. Speed loaders were privately purchased by officers. The British military officially adopted them at the end of World War I. Speed loaders became mainstream in the early 1970s, with a rise in gun crime across America many police officers began using them. There are many speed loader styles, including strips and half-moon clips. Before speed loaders, many cops were relying on dump pouches for a speedy reload. Top brake revolvers are considered by some slightly faster to reload than a swing-out. Advantages include the design being ambidextrous, whereas a swing-out typically swings out to the left. The automatic ejection of top brake revolvers is helpful performing a top-up load. If you open a Webley revolver with care, the spent casings will eject, with the unused rounds remaining in their chamber. The biggest downside, which is why top brakes fell out of favor, is that because they are hinged, they don't have a solid frame. This is a particular issue with heavy caliber revolvers, where the recoil would cause the hinge joint and the latch to weaken over time. Top brake revolvers fell out of favor after more powerful smokeless cartridges became standard. Of course nowadays, the most standard sidearms used by militaries and police agencies are magazine fed, which can allow one to reload 20 rounds or more very easily and very quickly with little training. All right, I'm Johnny. Whether you break to the top or swing to the side, I want to thank you for taking a few minutes to break with me. Take care and have a nice rest of your day.